Are you ready to create real lasting change in your life? Whether you're looking to make a massive breakthrough in your business, your relationship, your career, your health, or anything else in your personal life, Unleash the Power Within can help you unlock and unleash the forces inside of you and let you create the quality of life you desire and deserve. Learn more about UPW and how you can surpass your own limitations to achieve every goal you've ever wanted by visiting www.tonyrobbins.com unleashed. Have you ever found yourself feeling lethargic throughout the day, even when you've had a really good night's sleep? Or what about that brain fog that clouds your ability to think and perform at your best? It can be incredibly frustrating, especially when you think you're doing everything right. That's why we wanted to sit down with Dave Asprey. Dave is the founder and CEO of Bulletproof, the world's first human performance nutrition company. He also hosts the top-ranking health podcast, Bulletproof Radio, and he's the author of the New York Times bestselling book, The Bulletproof Diet. Dave was able to hack his own health to lose 100 pounds and lower his biological age, all the while increasing his IQ and learning how to gain more energy with less sleep. The Financial Times calls him a biohacker who takes self-quantification to the extreme of self-experimentation. I caught up with Dave at a recent Business Mastery event. We talked about what it means to fuel your body with the right foods at the right times so you can function at your optimal state. We talk about allergies, toxins, and the environmental and genetic factors that are influencing the way that you feel. We cover ketones, mitochondria, fats, polyphenols, and collagen. And we discuss how you can really start to understand your body so that you can take control over your health. So without further ado, here's Dave Asprey. So Dave, thanks so much for joining us. We're super happy to have you here. Um, I want to start with identifying, you know, you talk about some of the symptoms of a poor performing brain. So irritability, food cravings, particularly for sugar, and brain fog. So the inability to think clearly, remember things, make good decisions. And how people either think that's normal or they give it a different cause, a different reason. What's the danger of this? And you talk about the new normal. What does that mean? I used to weigh 300 pounds and I thought I'm, I'm reasonably healthy. Uh, you know, I, I'm working out, I'm eating, I know I have some extra weight. And I just got used to opening the fridge. And what was I here for? Where are my car keys? What was that word I was looking for? Yeah. And that's just how it always was. So it felt like a normal state. It turns out that all of those things, uh, dropping words, not being able to remember where you were going or why you're going somewhere, or just having kind of get gaps or a lack of something in the middle of your day, or having to end a meeting, it's like, I have to eat. If I don't eat right now, I'm going to die. I, I did all those things regularly, and they just felt like life. None of those is normal. What's going on there is that your brain is the most power-hungry part of the body. So if you have a problem making energy in your cells, you're going to feel it in your brain first. You might be fat, you might be thin, but your performance is way less than you are capable of, but you won't feel it at all because you don't know what it feels like to be at full power. Wow. So in Headstrong, you also talk about toxins, right, and the effect that that has on your body and your brain. So what are some of the biggest ones, and specifically ones that exist today that maybe previous generations didn't have to deal with? Um, and what are some ways that you can identify the toxins that are impacting your body the most? Toxins have existed since the very beginning of life on Earth, or maybe even before that. <laughs> These are things that are either man-made or nature-made that damage systems in the body. The system that gets damaged the most is called your mitochondria. And you have a quadrillion ancient bacteria that are incorporated into your body. They're about 10% of your body weight. And these are basically the battery for your entire body. And the battery takes energy from food and from sunlight, actually, and from a couple other places. And it makes energy and then stores it in the water in your body. And then you can actually move around without having to have roots in the ground like a plant. So the toxins that are most nefarious are the ones that damage your battery. So that all of a sudden you can't make good use of food or you lose the charge. It's kind of like how your old cell phone is dead at 2 in the afternoon. You have to keep carrying around a battery pack for it. Well, you're doing the same thing when you have a Snickers bar in your pocket. <laughs> like, what's going on here? Yeah. So the toxins that damage the mitochondria the most are actually called mitotoxins, as in mitochondrial damaging. And you'd be surprised because 
around half of prescription drugs, especially antibiotics, damage your mitochondria. Really? Yeah. And the number one problem that I've come across that I see just everywhere is that about 40 years ago, we started spraying our soil with a chemical that caused soil fungus to become hyper aggressive and make toxins that are really damaging to humans, especially to our mitochondria. So today, we have water damaged buildings with toxic mold in them. At least half of buildings, according to the documentary I filmed called Moldy, mm -hmm. where I interviewed top experts around the world about this problem. So there are countless people who walk around with brain fog because they're slowly poisoning their mitochondria because they're sleeping in a bedroom that has you know, black patches on the wall or because they're going to school or work in a building that has ceiling tiles that have stains on them because we're not maintaining our buildings well and because we have these hyper aggressive species of fungus that have been out there. Now, you may go, oh my God, what's this guy talking about? But here's the deal. Half of all buildings have this. It's the number one source of kryptonite in the environment around us. These are naturally occurring toxins that were amplified by our mistreatment of our soil. And then we have things like heavy metals like mercury, which Tony has dealt with, and I certainly had high mercury levels as well. These things go through and they cause you to just have less energy. And for you, you may actually feel it in, in your heart. So the mitochondria in your heart might not work quite as well, so you have blood pressure regularities. Another person may get cancer because cancer is a mitochondrial disorder, and another person may get Alzheimer's or MS or Parkinson's or some other chronic disease, but the uniting element for all of these is mitochondria. So when you make those work, all of your chronic degenerative diseases go away, your resilience to toxins gets much higher, but wouldn't it just be easier if you worked to avoid these things? The problem is that the toxin that might be worse for you is probably not the same one that's for me. Sure. And if they're environmental as well, they have different concentrations. So, you know, I live in Southern California. It's dry. So I tend to assume, okay, I c there's not a mold problem in my building. That might be a dangerous assumption because maybe that's not true. It turns out San Diego has a major problem with mold. It's wow. because you're on the coast. So you get air conditioning. Yep and you get wet air that comes in from the water, it condenses on the air conditioner, and you can really run into problems. So it's not a question of whether your environment is dry or not, it's a question of what's going on in the buildings when you're indoors. Yeah. It's also just a question of asking yourself, how am I doing right now? It is normal for you to feel a little anxiety response when you go into a place that's not compatible with your biology. You just have to learn to listen to it. So if you walk into a, a place, especially if it smells a little funky, and you just go, wow, I, I don't feel quite as focused, or why do I want sugar right now? I was totally fine five minutes ago. Your body's crying out for sugar saying, I just got toxins. I would like to oxidize and excrete those. I need more energy. My batteries are winding down. Something just harmed my ability to, to be in the world. Give me more energy. Now, if you're looking to unleash the power within and something just took away some of the power within, all you have to do is notice that and then change your environment. It gets a little sneakier with something like mercury that builds up over time, though. And something like Roundup or, or glyphosate, that directly damages mitochondria. It's toxic to bacteria. It's not toxic to our cells. But we forget the cells in your brain have 15,000 ancient bacteria incorporated into them. There's more mitochondria in your body than there are cells in your body. And these are little red rod-shaped bacteria that became a part of our system. So if you're exposing yourself to things like that, you're probably not going to know until you've been exposed for a long time. Like what happened to Tony or what happened to me, where eventually you're going, wow, everything is hard. And it didn't used to be hard. Why, why is this happening? And then you get your blood tests. But for the most part... If you eat something, your body will tell you if it was something that gave you a food high, not like a, a tweaky MSG caffeine food high, but just like, wow, I, I feel really good. I feel more like myself. Yeah. That's how you're supposed to feel when you eat. Well, you mentioned in the book that uh, one of the ways that your body reacts to toxins actually is that your heart rate increases yeah. up to 17 beats per minute, higher than normal. So is there a way that we can sort of measure our own reaction in a quantitative way instead of a, you know, oh, I feel a little better, I feel a little worse. Um, what are some of the tools that you recommend so that people can understand what their reaction is to toxins and then ultimately be able to isolate the variables and figure out what is poisoning them the most? 
Definitely, if you're exposed to some toxins or some foods that you're allergic to, your fight or flight response will get triggered. There's, I would call it old research, but very valid research going back 30 plus years before we had a lot of the biochemistry knowledge we have today, saying, look, it's free to measure heart rate. You can get something on the back of your phone or something actually that's software on your phone that uses the light on the back of your phone to shine into your finger to get your heart rate. Yep. Uh, there's even an app on the iPhone called a Food Detective that I launched with the Bulletproof Diet that allows you to measure before and after a meal. And if you see a huge increase in heart rate, something in that meal, whether it was a toxin or an allergen, it affected you. And even if you don't feel it, your body felt it. And a lot of the exercises that Tony does in the room here are about getting us to feel what's happening in our body. As you get more in tune with what's going on, like, wait, a race car driver knows when something's not quite right with the engine. Like, it's not there. Your body is a very high performance machine. And when you learn how to drive it right, you'll feel when something's off. And then it's your job to play detective and figure out what it is. Got it. So it's interesting you use the word allergic because so many of us, we go to the doctor, they said, you have any allergies? And if you don't have any medically detected allergies, you just say no. There's, and you know, same thing with gluten, right? So there are a lot of people who are gluten sensitive, but they're not so extreme. Mm -hmm. Is there like a change in vernacular that needs to happen where people need to start using certain words to, you know, cause toxic is also a very powerful oh, yeah. word. So is there something in your vocabulary that you've started to use in your talks or, uh, on Bulletproof Radio, right, where you're getting people accustomed to almost the new language of sensitivity. I, I like to talk about which foods are biologically compatible with you. Mm, this that's is a yeah. genetic issue and an environmental issue. For instance, around a quarter of us, when we eat members of the nightshade family, this is basic stuff, tomatoes, potatoes, uh, bell peppers, hot peppers, eggplants. When we eat those, it causes rheumatoid arthritis. Like massive, probably 20% wow. of all this autoimmune kind of arthritis, which is a massive, like billions of dollars That's of insane. medical costs. Yeah. It comes from potatoes. It, that, that said, I am genetically incompatible with these things. If I eat a little bit of, of bell pepper or tomato, or actually I don't can tomatoes, but potatoes, I will get the pain that I grew up with. I had arthritis in my knees since I was 14. I thought it was normal to just always have pain all along my spine. All I have to do is stop eating foods that are incompatible with my biology, and then I'm fine. And a lot of the work that went into the Bulletproof Diet, the book that came out before Headstrong, was around identifying those foods that are compatible with some people but not others. And everyone listening should just know there are suspect foods out there. Lentils work great for one part of the population. For other people, you will always have inflammation, and very few doctors out there are going to say you're allergic to them. You're not. It's just when they're in your body, you're inflamed. When you're inflamed, it means your mitochondria didn't work. When your mitochondria aren't working, you have less power within. It, <laughs> it's, it's supposed to work that way. So what that means is that you've got to listen to your body. If you go out and you have a meal and an hour or two later, you have brain fog. It's a very Red clear flag. sign. Yeah. Like something in there didn't work. And sure. then you go back, what was it? Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. So let's talk about fat. Uh, my favorite subject. <laughs> There's been a lot of talk, right, about good fats and bad fats. Um, and even the ways that they should be combined with other foods, you know, to have the best effect on your body. Um, can you explain a little bit about your approach to fat and help people to understand difference between quote good and quote bad and then also the wonderful world of ketosis. All right. All of the cells in your body are made out of fat. The cell membranes aren't like a saran wrap or, or a membrane really. They're just little tiny droplets of fat that push water away from both sides. That means that fat is not just a fuel source, it's a building block. And when you eat the kind of fat that makes stable cell membranes, you get cell membranes that work well, but you also get mitochondrial cell membranes. That means that the battery in your body is built out of fat. If you walk around eating fried foods all the time, you are actually going to be attempting to build your battery system out of damaged components. And when you do that, you get dysfunctional mitochondria that create inflammation in your cells. The first place you're going to feel dysfunction is your brain. The second mm -hmm. place is in your heart. 
So when you feel this chronic anxiety, it can be derived from just not having enough energy in the body. When you feel this brain fog, it's from not having enough energy in the brain. Even when you get light sensitivity, it's because your eyes have huge numbers of mitochondria in them. So you end up going through this thing saying, well, what's going on? It turns out it's all about fat because they're built out of fat and they need a ton of energy, especially the neurons in your brain. Your, your neurons are the energy hogs of the whole body. They will suck so much energy that they're actually trained to eat fat instead of sugar if there are ketones present. So if you eat enough fat with vegetables, without too much meat and without a lot of carbs, or if you use uh, brain octane, the stuff that, that I make that goes in Bulletproof Coffee, you can raise your ketone levels up. And ketones are, we like to call it a backup power supply. It turns out a small amount of ketone present all the time will fill in energy when your blood sugar swings up or down. So with, we call it exogenous ketones, and these are uh, the ability to bring ketones in even if you're not fasting or going on like an aggressive Atkins or paleo or like relatively extreme diet. Sure. Uh, probably half the people listening, if they're into health, have been in ketosis once or twice, and probably 2% of them are in ketosis right now because it's really hard if you have a job, a life, if you travel or you have kids, to never eat any carbohydrates. Yeah. In fact, it's stressful on the system anyway to do that for long periods of time. So what I do and have done for 10 plus years is I use Bulletproof Coffee to raise my ketones in the morning. Sure. Even just coffee itself or caffeine will double ketone production, and a new study just came out about this. So there's an argument that says you might want to have a little bit of something caffeinated in the morning unless it doesn't work for you. It's not that everyone has to do the same thing. It's that you need to find out exactly what works. And you don't want to take something that's toxic in order to get that. Like there are lots of energy drinks <laughs> that are full of sugar, which sure. is super acidifying. And the sugar actually, for a short period of time, increases mitochondrial function. Then it tanks it. And what you want to do is have this stable energy. Ketones are the way to do that. When your ketone levels are up a little bit, two magic things happen. One is that a hormone called ghrelin will drop. Ghrelin is the craving hunger hormone. Mm. So when you get a little bit of, of this, all of a sudden your willpower required to say no to donuts, it, it goes away because your body doesn't want the donut anymore. So the voice in your head that says, eat the donut, it shuts up. So then you're just free of cravings all of a sudden. When you're free of cravings, all the energy that you were applying to your willpower, you can now take the energy and you can apply it towards personal development, towards growing your business, towards spending time with your family, whatever you want. But a lot of us are spending two thirds of our free cycles managing anxiety that comes from biological reasons and they're managing their hunger that comes from biological reasons. And if you can just turn that down a little bit, the amount of free energy that's just sitting there is it's ginormous. You would have no idea it was there. So what are some of the, because some of our readers might not be familiar with the components of the diet that you recommend, <clears throat> what are some of the things that they should be clearing out of their pantry and then restocking with? There's a, a, something called the Bulletproof Diet Roadmap, which is a free download that's the skeleton of the book. And there's three categories of foods that are listed on it. One of them is kryptonite foods. And these are foods that you just have no business putting these in your diet. And one of those foods is grains. And I mean all grains, not just gluten-containing grains. They, even ancient grains? Even ancient grains, mm. as delicious as they are. <laughs> <laughs> and how great sounding it, they are, too. It, it has to do with the fact that plants and animals only run on four different rules. And we enforce these rules differently. And this is a, a big part of my talk here at, at Tony's event. But one of the rules is run away from or kill scary things. If you're a plant, and so bacteria will do this. Bacteria can like float away. Yeah, plants <laughs> Plant, can't run. Yeah, <laughs> plants are stuck in one place. So their defense system is sometimes thick skins, sometimes prickly things. But usually it's chemical. Mm -hmm. If you're a seed of grass, you really, really want to make another plant. You don't want to be eaten. So you coat yourself in stuff that discourages animals from eating you, things that absorb minerals. And we have a major problem with storage toxins where we harvest these grains and then they start to mold. But they're within legal limits. With the same problems in coffee where there are well-known mitochondrial toxins in grains and in coffee and 
there really aren't standards. So then people eat them and then they get tired. We're also spraying our grains with insane amounts of this glyphosate stuff, mm -hmm. or Roundup it's called, yeah. that causes problems for people. So you get grains out, you get margarine, you get all fried foods, even if you fry it at home in coconut oil, it's still fried, you damage the fats. Fats mm -hmm. are not supposed to be heated to high temperatures. Add the fat after you cook, whenever you can, mm -hmm. and you will change your brain's performance. There's also food colorings, additives, and unlabeled MSG, which comes in the form of natural yeast extract and spice extractives and all these sort of mm, code words. So when you're reading labels, it's code yeah. word for MSG, yeah. Right. And anytime it says flavorings, you have to wonder. It doesn't mean mm. it's always MSG. Quote, natural flavorings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's also frustrating because I, I run a food company. You'll uh -huh. find Bulletproof products at Whole Foods and Sprouts and uh, uh, Central Markets and, and all over the, the country right now. It's, it's tough because sometimes I have to put natural flavorings on the label, but I know where they come from. Yeah. Like there, there's a thing about integrity there, whereas sometimes it's used to obfuscate where things come from. Yeah. You can actually see in advertisements for the food industry saying this is a flavor enhancer and it doesn't have to be labeled as MSG. It's only 74% MSG. So things like that where I don't know what it is, you probably want to take that out of your diet as well. Yeah. So that's a kryptonite food thing. And then you get up one level from that, you have suspect foods. And earlier I mentioned these potatoes and tomatoes. You're like, how could those be bad for you? Mm -hmm. Well, probably one in four, one in five people, those are not gonna work for you. And for other people, maybe they do, it, it's okay. We also have things like kale, these leafy greens. There are a meaningful number of people who have a hard time processing oxalic acid. In fact, if you try and take kale and feed it to a horse, and I live on an organic farm, the horse will spit it out. They won't touch the stuff. And this is one reason I recommend cooking your kale instead of eating it raw. Mm. And you can do things to inactivate these toxins, and it's there to keep bugs and animals from eating the kale. So what they do is they make a compound that will stick to calcium in your blood, form tiny crystals that move around, that can cause brain fog, that can cause joint pain, very specifically kidney pain or a really painful condition for women called vulvodynia where it grows in your reproductive parts and causes severe pain on touching them. That's why <laughs> knowing it's a suspect food is important. <laughs> if these are your symptoms, maybe you want to chill on the kale salads, yeah. but maybe they make you feel great. It's okay, but you've got to know there is a risk with these foods and you don't need to be afraid of them. You just want to be tracking because if someone tells you, Whole grains and kale are healthy, so you're like, great, I'm gonna have like a raw kale burger every day for the rest of my life, and then you start having performance problems, well, maybe you wanna mix that up a little bit. Uh, the other thing that causes problems for so many people is casein or milk protein. Mm. Milk protein sticks to the good stuff in plants and in coffee called polyphenols and keeps your body from absorbing it, and it increases your risk of cancer. This is one of the excuses that the, the sort of very low-fat vegan crowd will say, well, all animal products are bad. This is the main core of the China study. Because casein is bad, therefore everything from animals is bad. Mm, yeah. There's not a lot of science in that. Sure. Yep. <laughs> but casein itself is something that I recommend you restrict because it causes aging, because it causes, especially in higher amounts, it causes systemic damage. Yeah. So putting milk in your coffee does multiple things, one of which reduces your body's ability to absorb the healthy polyphenols, right? One of the core components of the Headstrong program is that polyphenols, these things that make blueberries blue and, and kale have its really rich colors and chard and things like that, and the reason coffee is black and tea is green is polyphenols. They are signaling molecules for your mitochondria. They tune the battery in your system. Well, it's a bit of a problem if you're not getting polyphenols because your vegetables are grown on poor soil or you're just not eating enough vegetables. So, so in Headstrong, I recommend two grams of polyphenols a day, which is almost impossible to get unless you're eating like I do, which is a plate of vegetables with a small amount of wild-caught, very healthy protein and tons of fat to increase absorption of these really precious compounds. Coffee is the number one source of polyphenols out there. Green tea is high in it. Dark chocolate is high in this. So if you eat more of those foods. Those dark colored, yeah. yeah. But if you put milk on them, you don't get the benefits. So if you eat them with a slice of cheese, you don't get the benefits. So by restricting this milk, you're doing yourself some favors. And this is why Bulletproof Coffee uses the mold-free coffee beans. 
It uses brain octane oil that has no casein. This is like the, the hypercritical extract of, of coconut oil that raises ketones. And instead of milk, use butter. I discovered this because I went to Tibet. And I'm at 18,000 feet on the side of Mount Kailash, which is the, the headwaters for the Indus and Ganges River, which is the mountain where Buddhists and Hindus believe their gods live. So a really holy place, but in the middle of nowhere, 10 degrees below zero. And I drank a bowl of yak butter tea. Mm. And I felt totally amazing. I'm like, how is this possible? I should feel like I'm freezing to death and have no oxygen because that's actually what's happening. Sure. And I took that, that awareness, why do I feel this way now, home, and I started experimenting. It turns out that when you blend undamaged fat into a polyphenol-rich beverage, it unleashes the power of those polyphenols, and it does something to even to the water in the coffee. Mm. And that's why in the last year there were 48 million cups of Bulletproof coffee served, wow. because it works, and it's because of polyphenols, and if you put milk in there, it doesn't work anymore. Coming up, we're talking to Dave about intermittent fasting, the secret to losing weight, and the finding the right diet plan for your body. But first, a quick word from one of our health partners. We're all busy. Busy tackling our to-do lists, which can seem never-ending. Busy achieving everything we've set our mind to. Sometimes it can feel like there are barely enough hours in the day just to have a career, build and keep our relationships, take care of our kids, and still get in some me time. But regardless of how busy we are, we have to take care of our health so we can perform at our peak when others are counting on us, so we can fully enjoy the time with our loved ones, or what Tony calls magic moments. One of the keys to living a life full of vitality, though, is to choose foods that give us energy. The right nutrition makes a huge difference in how we look, how we feel, and how our bodies work. So for those busy moments where you need a healthy snack that fuels your body and tastes great, FitJoy protein bars are a great choice. FitJoy bars are GMO-free, gluten-free, and there's no artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners. These bars have 20 grams of protein and more than 10 grams of fiber per bar. As a listener of the Tony Robbins podcast, you can get 20% off your entire order. Go to fitjoynutrition.com and enter the code TONYPOD at checkout. That's T-O-N-Y-P-O-D. One of the interesting things that I found um, in Southeast Asia is how Buddhist monks, they fast, they don't eat solid foods after noon. And so they practice that same intermittent fasting um, concept, but they sort of reverse their time. So what you've recommended is for people to drink bulletproof coffee in the morning and then get in a state of ketosis and then have their meals later in the day. Now, when I first saw that, my reaction was, well, I'm up at 5 a.m. with two little kids. How am I going to make it to 2 p.m., right? So I sort of reverse it. I'll stop eating in the early evening, so 4 or 5 p.m., and then, you know, not have dinner and sort of stack in the beginning of the, of the day. Is there a reason that's not necessarily mentioned here? Is there a reason why you think for most people the, the reverse works well? So intermittent fasting is a really important practice for your mitochondria. Yeah. The technical definition of plain intermittent fasting is don't eat for 18 hours a day. It doesn't really matter which 18 hours of the day it is. Sure, so you can adapt it to your schedule. You can, mm -hmm. and there's some arguments about the best time to do it. And the best time to do it is when you're going to adhere to doing it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So what Make it easy for yourself, right? Yeah. yeah. And for you, given that you wake up really early and that you have two young kids, the same as I do, um, there's absolutely an argument for it. And the bulletproof intermittent fasting protocols are a little bit different because during the, pa the fasting period, you can have bulletproof coffee because it has zero protein and zero sugar. So you get ketones, which is the whole point of fasting anyway, is to just raise ketones a little bit. And it has some other mitochondrial repair mechanisms. But by avoiding protein and sugar, you're, you're cheating. You're able to have energy. What I found when I started intermittent fasting years ago was that I would get tired and hungry by like 1130 Mm. Uh, if I was doing the, the morning fast protocol. Mm -hmm. But I have a job. I'm running strategy for a big company, yeah. and I'm in a meeting, and I just don't want that. So Bulletproof Coffee made it effortless, where there was just no willpower required. What, especially for people who have a real problem with uh, uh, insulin sensitivity, people who have 25 or more pounds to lose, uh, women over 40 who have uh, love handles they don't want, 
I tell them that they should put protein, and I make a collagen protein, which is the one I recommend because it's not casein because it doesn't harm the coffee. Yeah. And because, I, I love that product. It's okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> you use it yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Collagen's amazing. I, I use a lot of collagen in my cooking because it's like the best protein. Yeah, and especially with, you know, not to be superficial, but with women, when you explain the concept, right? You're like your, your hair, your skin, your nails. Yeah. That's what it's made and, out and of. And your bones. And right? your bones, right? And those are the things that we're very concerned about keeping healthy. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're you're familiar with collagen. We use collagen in the protein bars as well instead of like the milk protein isolate, like the cheap stuff that you sure. can get everywhere. Yeah. And this makes a, a huge difference as uh, even cognitively it makes a difference to get enough of the protein. Now, let's see. We were going somewhere with the protein you're asking me. Uh, we were talking about intermittent fasting. Uh, this, uh, yeah. It's about breakfast. There we go. Yeah, breakfast. Yeah. So during breakfast, you want – to have protein if you are one of those people who has extra weight to lose, if you're insulin resistant or you're leptin resistant, that's called, probably 30 grams. So then you just put it in your coffee and you're mm. good to go. Yep. And that can help with circadian timing. In fact, there's an argument that says you ought to have like a green tea or a decaf coffee, which has a lot more, uh, a lot more polyphenols than green tea does. Mm -hmm. But you could have this in the afternoon if you wanted to do a morning feed. Mm. And to be on the Bulletproof Diet, you don't have to do intermittent fasting at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, for a lot of people, it's too much stress to do it, especially every day. Mm -hmm. But you do it sometimes, and you notice a difference in your clarity. You notice a difference in how your pants fit, and it doesn't require effort when you're getting the brain octane during the fasting period. So for you, I'd say, look, if it works better in your life, have a really big breakfast. You sound like an early riser. <laughs> so then have a big breakfast, enjoy it, have even your vegetables, have your protein, have some extra fat, and then taper off in the evening. There's great evidence that'll work as well as the other way. Sure. Yeah, and I think what really resonates with people too is the ability to customize and make it work for you. Because, you know, as Tony says as well, if you make things difficult for yourself, you're not going to execute, you're not going to follow through. So is that one of the reasons why people fail at diets? They're making it too difficult? Um, why, is, why are there so many obstacles to turning your health around? The reason people fail at diets is for a couple different reasons. One of the big reasons is that, well, they expect perfection. Perfection is all about fear. And this is something Tony talks about so eloquently. Mm -hmm. Fear of failure is something that can be motivating. It motivated my entrepreneurial success in my 20s very heavily. But when you're using it for dieting, you will fail because perfection is not achievable. Like, I'll tell you, look, the very best meat you can have is grass-fed steak. Say, oh, but was the animal ethically slaughtered? Yes. But was it slaughtered by a monk? Yes. <laughs> Okay. Was it a one-armed monk? Yes, left or right-handed. Okay, like seriously. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's ridiculous, but this is what our nervous system, this is what your ego will do to you. Yeah. You can never be all the way perfect. And at a certain point, you're like, oh, I was going to be in ketosis this week, and I went to a party, and I ate half a cookie. It took me out of ketosis. They're from a failure. Therefore, Ben and Jerry's, right? Yeah. This is they so just fall common. completely off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the Bulletproof Diet and, and the recommendations in Headstrong, they're sliding scales. So instead of saying, oh, I had a cookie, it's the end of the world, mm. like you're always on the roadmap somewhere. You get to pick what neighborhood. And maybe instead of having just like, you know, fried Chinese food and, and pizza and beer and just, you know, wallowing in it, maybe like, you know, I'm going to decide to not be perfect today, but I'm going to do something that isn't particularly harmful. Right? So I'm going to eat some carbs that are more carbs than I really should have, but I'm going to have a piece of fruit instead of a piece of candy. Okay, you still made a better decision. So just completely discarding perfection as a goal is really important, which is an act of compassion and kindness towards yourself. Sure, forgiving yourself for small yeah. mistakes. If they're not really mistakes, they're just and, small, small slides. And yeah. check this out. Com compassion and kindness mm -hmm. reduces stress, which reduces mm. your mitochondrial demand for blood sugar. Because if you're feeling stressed because you ate the pizza or the cookie or whatever else, you'll trigger a little bit of your fight or flight response, mm. which is going to change the batteries, these mitochondria in your body to get ready to run away from a perceived threat, which is your imperfection. So it actually tunes your body to be in rest and reset mode just when you're like, I'm going to chill about perfection. But the second reason people fail in diets is that they believe that dieting is about willpower. 
Willpower is a finite resource. Willpower comes directly from mitochondrial energy. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you get low on energy, and let's say you're dieting, are you eating less energy maybe? Yes, you are. So as soon as your brain has a little bit less energy, the, the adult part of you, the human part of you, the thinking rational part of your brain that's telling you not to eat the cookie, it will be disabled because the power plug is pulled. Yep. And then the animal parts of you that are emergent behaviors from your mitochondria, the part of those little bacteria in your cells, bacteria know, eat or you starve to death. That's all they know, they're not very smart. <laughs> well, you make that decision a quadrillion times in all the cells in your body and the donut has a siren call. And you say, no donut, and the donut says yes. And you say, no donut, <laughs> and the donut says yes. And pretty soon you eat half the donut and then you tell yourself that you're a failure or a loser and then mm -hmm. you go into the fight or flight about failure. This is why people fail in diets. Here's the trick, and this is in Headstrong, this is in the Bulletproof Diet. When you get your food and your environment dialed in, losing weight requires zero willpower. And here at Unleash the Power Within, I have met four members of Tony's crew and like dozens and dozens of attendees who come up and like, Dave, I, I know I don't want to bother you, but I've lost 50 pounds. Yeah. I've lost 100 pounds. And it didn't take any effort. Yeah. And for me, I struggled. I lost more than 100 pounds because I lose 20, I gain 30. Lose 30, gain 40. Over and over. And it was always an act of willpower. And it was always an admission of failure yeah, when the weight would come yourself, back. Yeah, yourself, the cycle, the yeah. downward spiral. It, yeah. it, it's not supposed yeah, it's not to healthy. be hard. Yeah. It's all about managing your sleep, your temperature, mm -hmm. the environmental variables around you so that the battery in your body is strong. When you take food and you effectively use it to make energy that goes to your brain first and goes to your heart, goes to your muscles and goes to taking action, well, then it doesn't require any effort to lose weight. Yeah. It's when the system is broken and the energy that was supposed to go into your brain goes into your waist that's when you've got a problem and you fix that not by trying harder, but you fix that by changing your environment because your cells listen to your environment, they don't listen to you very well. Yep. I love that when you take responsibility for your environment, um, I love the, the impact that it has because essentially it, because it makes it easy, your brain can then focus on other things. Yeah. And I think our audience particularly, there are a lot of business owners and they would find that a huge relief because then they can take that energy and focus it on their business, their family, their relationship. Yeah. So on that note, given that so many of Tony's clients are entrepreneurs, I think what you have done with the Bulletproof brand, um, and particularly moving from one domain because your background was in a completely different space. Yeah, I'm a computer hacker by background. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and taking something that was has, has personal meaning for you and has a level of passion, right? Passion, purpose. This is exactly what Tony, um, you know, encourages in people and have turned it into your livelihood. It's your business. And you've built this amazing company. Um, I think a lot of people would want to know, you know, maybe a little bit about that journey. And then also what's next for Bulletproof? I mean, now you can go into Whole Foods, you can order Bulletproof coffee. So you've achieved a level of awareness and sort of saturation in the marketplace that our audience aspires to. So I'd love to yeah, hear a little bit more about that, mm -hmm. and then what's next for you guys? It's uh, it's kind of humbling to look at, at how Bulletproof started. I was a VP at a big publicly traded company, head of global evangelism, stock options, quarter million dollar paycheck sort of situation with two young kids. And I just realized, look, I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars hacking my biology. I raised my IQ. I spent months with electrodes glued to my brain <laughs> uh, doing advanced neurofeedback. Uh, and most people never have the opportunity <clears throat> most people never have the opportunity to do that. So I was very fortunate, I made six million dollars when I was twenty six, lost it when I was twenty eight. But I got to invest in my own hardware and understand things at a level that frankly I wish someone had told me when I was fourteen when I got arthritis, when I was twenty three after I'd had three knee surgeries after I struggled as an obese person. I still have stretch marks, I don't know how to get rid of those. And I said, I should write this down. So I started blogging kind of as a, a side project, figuring maybe five people, I, I can completely change their life. And that I, I win karma points for that. And just I, I just wanted to pay it back because mm -hmm. no one had done this for me and hundreds of experts had educated me. And I put it down. It turns out that more than five people are interested. And I'd identified that coffee was making me crash. And I loved coffee, but I gave it up for five years. Mm. So I hacked coffee, the process of <laughs> making 
just coffee beans yeah. in order to make ones that wouldn't cause me to crash. The market size for mold-free coffee was exactly zero when I started Bulletproof. Wow. <laughs> I mean, there was no demand. No yeah. one had ever heard of it. So I said, maybe there's a hundred people out there who care about coffee purity and just want like the clean part of coffee. So let me try this and maybe they'll help me cover the cost of you know, tens of thousands of dollars of R&D. It turns out they there was a demand for it, and there are countless people who simply can't drink coffee, but they drink bulletproof coffee that's lab tested, and they feel different. They do it with or without the butter and the brain octane and all that. And these are, are things that are disruptive. Okay, coffee is the number one traded commodity out there, right? It's it's the hardest thing to differentiate. Yeah. A lot of people don't know this, but every consumer packaged goods company you can name, like all the really big ones, mm -hmm. they all started out trying to differentiate coffee about 100 plus years ago. So the really? history of CPG yeah. is the history of coffee marketing. Wow. Okay. So this is the hardest, worst place you could ever try and differentiate. And Bulletproof successfully did that. And we did it using principles of biochemistry and things that come out of more my background in, in building parts of the internet and computer hacking, saying what's the system of coffee instead of what every company has always done, which is for everything we put in our mouth. How cheap is it and how good does it taste? And that's all that matters. And what I care about is how does it make me feel? That's yeah. all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like it to taste good. I'd like it to be convenient. And I'd like it to be affordable. But I'll pay more to feel good because it's worth more. Sure. So that was the genesis of this. It started out as a blog. I started the podcast, which has won a Webby Award. <laughs> It has about 50 million downloads uh, called Bulletproof Radio. I said, you know, I should write a book. So I wrote my very first book around fertility. And my wife was infertile, so I did a ton of research. And we had two kids at 39 and 42. And she's a medical doctor who runs a fertility coaching practice for uh, executives now. And that whole path just taught me so much about how do I share this kind of information. I started putting this stuff on the blog. And then when it was time to write the book, The Bulletproof Diet, I had helped so many people that these incredible people came out of the woodwork to help. Uh, one of them was uh, Rick Rubin, who's a famous music producer and had, had used Bulletproof Coffee and is, is really public about that. Uh, so I'm, I'm comfortable sharing that. And he, he said, oh, Dave, let me, let me connect you with some publishers. And, and it was just like everyone wanted to help. Yeah. Because when you're in a position of, of being mission-driven and helping, and when you've paid it forward by giving away your most precious knowledge, it, uh, it, it, there's just a natural desire uh, to pay it forward. So I'm, I'm just humbled at the, the hundreds and, and sometimes thousands of people who are just willing to stand up and go, oh, that works. Or... Here's that key introduction at just the right time. Uh, some of uh, Tony's uh, contemporaries and friends, guys like Peter Diamandis and, and Joe Polish, mm -hmm. have helped me enormously. So what I do is I, I'm like, oh, guys, do you want more energy in your head? Like, here's how I can help you. Sure. Like, here's how to hack that nagging problem. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, this is cool. Here's some knowledge I have for you. So, so there's yeah. a really collegial, value. Yeah. yeah, collegial, just happy, amazing thing that happens when you're mission driven. Um, as an entrepreneur, I have an MBA from Wharton, uh, and I've participated in the. <laughs>
disruption of two different big industries in telecom. I've run strategy for two different companies with a billion dollars in revenue. So I'm a, quote, real business person. <laughs> uh, and I got to tell you, being head of global evangelism for computer virus software, that's a hard job. Talking to people about coffee and living forever and having a higher IQ Oh my God, it's so much fun. And it's so easy yeah. compared to what I used to do. Like, why wasn't I doing this sooner? Yeah, that is definitely a clear indication that you're in the right space. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's next for the company? What's, what are your plans? Well, we are in the middle of closing our Series B funding, which is pretty exciting. Our Series A was led by Trinity Ventures, which is, uh, this is a VC where I used to work, that was the first investor in Starbucks and Jamba Juice. So with a long history of, of investing in companies like this. A lot of entrepreneurs listening right now are, they own their company outright, and they haven't gone the venture-backed route. There are risks to doing that, and there are also huge opportunities. So my, my inclination is that every time I get someone to drink a cup of Bulletproof coffee, I know what it's doing to their brain. I know what it's doing to their mitochondria, and I know what it does to the quality of their energy. Yeah. I believe that well-fed people are kinder to each other. So That's very true. <laughs> if, if you're well-fed, if you have your bulletproof coffee, you're less likely to flip off the guy in traffic yeah. in front of you. Right? Like it just spreads. You're not going to yell at your kids as much. Yeah. And you're going to be nicer to your employees. You are going to make better decisions, and that the world really changes when that kind of a thing happens. It starts in your biology. So. I kind of feel a moral obligation to make Bulletproof really big because I know it's helping. Mm -hmm. That means going down the venture-funded path. Yeah, That's why you can find our, our products nationally. That's why our e-commerce site at Bulletproof.com. See that plug I just worked on? <laughs> uh, but th that's why the e-commerce is, is, is going really well. Mm -hmm. And that's why I just published Headstrong. I mean, it takes thousands of hours yeah. to do that. And if you think about this, if you're an entrepreneur listening, okay, Webby Award-winning podcast, two episodes a week. New York Times bestselling author, soon hopefully to be you know, a multiple times New York Times bestselling author. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I'm a dad. I have two young kids. I have you know, a beautiful wife, and, and I live on an organic farm, and I have a dog named Merlin. And, <laughs> you know, I, I have a life, sure. and I'm able to hold this together without the fear and anxiety and stress because I have more energy than I've ever had in my life. I found that in order to achieve at these levels, the company, it, everyone's company, is a reflection of their own energy. So if you have stable energy that you are conscious of, that you can control, and you have lots of it, it allows you to make a company that can grow at a reasonable pace with a, a reasonable culture and just uh, and, and just succeed at levels that that are pretty good. But if your energy is off and you're dealing with relationship issues at home or you have mm -hmm. these subtle fears of failure or anxiety or the stuff that we've been talking about for two days um, on stage with Tony, it, it's it's very hard for your company to be a reflection of what you want it to be because it'll be a reflection of you. Absolutely. It's perfect. Well, thanks, Dave, so much for being on the Tony Robbins podcast and everybody listening, tune into Bulletproof Radio. Go get a copy of Headstrong. Uh, available at all the places you can get books. <laughs> um, and that's all for now. Thank you. The Tony Robbins Podcast is directed by Tony Robbins and hosted by Anna Yord. Carrie Song is our executive producer. Tyler Colbertson is our associate producer. Jamie Carvajal and Adriel De La Torre are our digital editors. Special thanks to Diane Adcock and Mary Buckheit for their creative review. Copyright Robbins Research International.